bunch of demons. Always talking out their ass. Uncle Tomahawk. That's See how you got these pompous Go bastards ahead, come down here in, in the middle of a, a native rally with their dirty ass hat on? <laughs> with their dusty ass hat on? Crickets. Crickets. A bunch of future school shooters. That's right. A bunch of in incest babies. Welcome to the Philip DeFranco Show. I'm PewDiePie as your host. Uh, let's just jump right into it, shall we? So by now we've all seen the video of the Covington students, and we've all now seen the full video, I hope, that pretty much exonerates them of any sort of racism or anything like that. Now, were some of them being like we like silly high school students? Of course they were. But were they doing anything racist or really like antagonizing anybody? Of course not. So what ended up being the reality of what happened was that this group called the Black Israelites, who are always saying things, uh, ridiculous things, were calling the kids crackers, saying the other black kids with them were going to get their organs harvested by their friends, uh, telling them to go back to Europe, all sorts of terrible, terrible things. Now, of course, all these media companies, they jumped on it within uh, 15 minutes, saw this racist school. People are calling their school, telling them to be expelled. People are threatening the kids. And even Philip DeFranco went along with this, this fake, st fake story, this fake narrative. But to his own credit, he actually came back and recorrected a lot of it and showed what actually happened. Students might as well have just spit on the cross with quotes like, they mock a serious, frail-looking older man and gloat in their momentary role as Roman soldiers to his Christ. Bullying is a worn-out word and doesn't convey the full extent of the evil on display here. It even had March for Life itself distancing itself from the boys, saying, the pro-life movement at its core is a movement of love and the reprehensible behavior shown in the video in no way represents the 46 years and millions of people who have peacefully and respectfully gathered in Washington, D.C. to stand up for the unborn. And also because I think it's important to hold ourselves accountable. I mean, this is something that I personally commented on over the weekend as well. I, like many others, commented on the information that was being thrown out there by all sides. And I joined Megan McCain in what she added in a follow-up tweet after she deleted the previous one, saying, I, like many others, may have reacted too quickly. And, you know, I do apologize for that because yes, while in the past I have said over and over I am not perfect, I'm not infallible, I'll always try to do my best and I will mess up. I really do apologize for reacting to this situation that, I mean, yes, based off of everything that was out there and how how you had people from all different sides denouncing it, I thought, okay, well, this is the situation. I wish that instead I had waited till Monday to have my team just scour through everything. So while I'm disappointed that he sort of took the, the side door out and excused himself by being like, I'm still against hate, you guys, as if there's not people who are against hate in general, but uh, I do commend him for going above and beyond what he did here. Uh, they really looked into pretty much every facet of the story and found that these kids were not really actually at fault. Maybe they're guilty of laughing or saying a few things stupidly, but they were getting picked on and having racist and hateful things uh, thrown at them. And then this guy with his cameras, mind you, uh, who's been an activist, this native guy, for a long time, uh, goes right into and starts beating the drum in his face, and he just stood there. Good on DeFranco and good on a lot of people who actually went back and backtracked and corrected their story, but of course there are some people who just really want to, you know, drive this home, these stupid kids. I hate them. Uh, we gotta prove that they're racist and, and terrible somehow, so let's post this. New York Daily News, Covington Catholic High School students in blackface at past basketball game. What they did here, and this is just insane. They post a picture of these kids dressed in uh, all black and their face painted all black for what's called a blackout game in basketball in the States. Uh, schools across the country do this depending on their color. They might do a whiteout game for winter. They might do an all blue game depending on their school's colors or their mascot colors. So they do this and they find a picture of them doing this and then they put it where it's a black player is being yelled at because he's on the other team and they make it seem like this is racist. I'm going to go insane. Covington Catholic High School basketball team celebrates win by making white power gesture. So now the official three point symbol, and I'm not even gonna do it because somebody's gonna screen grab me. The official three point uh, symbol that refs throw up and that players throw up is now the white power symbol. Do you see what you've done, Mike Cernovich, where they actually made people believe this was a white power symbol? That's just people celebrating a three point shot and people actually had to reply and post pictures of black players doing it in the NBA to prove that this isn't a white power symbol, but that didn't stop them there, now did it? Are you aware that the cover photo for this article shows a Covington student flashing a white power sign? Do you think, journalistically speaking, that that's appropriate? Do you think that's appropriate? So now the thing that kids do where if you look at their hand symbol, that means they get to punch you 
That's also a white power symbol. Can you believe that these, this school has been getting away with white power symbols since, I don't know, 1338? So now the school says it's having to up security because all these death threats, their extended family, their aunts and uncles have been getting death threats. And there was actually a protest by the group that the native guys are part of, and it was planned to be outside of the school. They've since changed it for security reasons, but the reason they can't back down, some people, you know, you got your story there, you've got your politics, and you can't back down because it's gonna make you look bad. Here's what they said. So in this big long post they put, this will be a peaceful vigil to confront racism. While this longer video gives better context to the situation, it still does not absolve these boys of their behavior. Their behavior at this point is still a problem. There are other videos from DC that same day showing boys yelling MAGA and build the wall at random passers-by. There's a video of a student telling native people that the land gets stolen. It's how the world works. Stolen well, from the aboriginals. It's stolen through all, all of history. Land gets stolen. It's how it works. But more stuff completely out of context. They tried. Nobody's been able to find this video of the kid saying build the wall to anybody. And the stolen land thing, he's just literally saying that uh, countries all around the world have had land stolen from them and wars happen. That's how it works. If you can name me a country that has not had a war over its land in its foundation, you let me know. What about Fiji? Can we think of Fiji? Maybe it's that island where the guy went to uh, to try to explore and the natives there shot him with an arrow. So as you can see, some people will not back down from their previous statements. They just keep digging their heels in because they can't be wrong or because it's politically inconvenient for them. This is troubling to see how much people are, one, willing to jump down people's throats and threaten children, and two, not back down once they've been given clear evidence to be proven wrong. So let me know what you think in the comments about the incident, who you think's in the right, who you think's in the wrong, maybe some stories of the weird stuff you've seen, the crazy comments, or some of the nice stuff. Try to be nice. Don't tell me I'm pale like somebody else did and it really hurt my feelings. I hate them. I wouldn't lie to you except for maybe this once.